Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 28th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jan wrote up a phishing email that he received that does mimic a lot of phishing emails that I've seen lately in that the actual phishing website is stored within Google's cloud API. Now, this limits a little bit what the attacker can do. They can essentially just store a static HTML page with JavaScript within Google's cloud API. So they can't really run any dynamic code. So typically what they're doing, and that's sort of what Jan is explaining here, is that JavaScript within the page will pick up the username and password the user entered and then send it off to another page that actually collects the data. In addition, the victim is then often redirected to a website that mimics the target that it originally intended to visit. So the intent here is that the user just feels, oh, the, the login failed, uh, let me just uh, log in again. And they may not necessarily notice that uh, they actually just lost their credentials to a phishing page. Now, what's a little bit disappointing here really with a Google Cloud Storage is that my experience and Jan uh, sort of uh, has this experience here too, it's really hard and slow at least to take down uh, these pages, even reporting them from within Google Chrome, which you would think uh, they sort of would integrate here in their abuse process, given that this is Google Cloud Storage we're talking about. Well, it can take uh, a day and longer to have these phishing pages taken down. Another interesting part here is that the attacker apparently did uh, register the domain name these emails came from. Maybe they stole it, a little bit hard to tell, but the emails were properly DKIM signed and also had the right SPF records set up. So this, of course, will make it less likely that a spam filter will eliminate those emails. And remember how Volkswagen got into a lot of trouble for tweaking its software to behave differently when it was uh, detecting that it was undergoing testing? Well, Trend Micro now was caught of similar behavior when it comes to Microsoft's Windows Hardware Quality Labs certification testing. Now, as part of uh, this uh, test, Microsoft is verifying that an application only requests memory from the operating system's non-executable, non-paged pool of available RAM. The reason behind this is that the non-executable part of RAM, as the name implies, cannot be used to execute code. So this avoids a lot of uh, overflow attacks. But if Trend Micro does not detect the presence of the Microsoft test driver or the driver verifier software, then it will actually grab memory from the executable non-page pool, which is less secure and against Microsoft's requirement to be actually a certified driver. Now, Microsoft did implement these tests and certification order to prevent a lot of bugs and vulnerabilities that arise if uh, developers write insecure and basically badly written uh, drivers. Now, not clear why uh, Trend Micro choose to go this route. Trend Micro uses part of its rootkit buster. Now, rootkit busters, of course, have sort of a little bit of difficult task of trying to compete with actual rootkits for ultimate access to the system. And maybe that's where some of this came from. But again, they were obviously bypassing Microsoft's tests. So now Trend Micro has uh, the questionable distinction of being probably the only antivirus vendor that was uh, blacklisted both by Microsoft and Apple. Apple, that happened a while ago. This was ultimately sort of discovered by uh, Bill DeMarie who did reverse engineer uh, this uh, rootkit buster 
Also sort of interesting that uh, the tool does actually not allow reverse analysis according to its EULA, but uh, Bill is sort of decided to still do the reverse analysis because the tool installed itself even though he denied he did not accept uh, the EULA. So all in all, somewhat questionable behavior and Trent removed downloads for its rootkit buster from its website for now. And well, if you're looking for a big disappointment when it comes uh, to a secure coding, it's always a good idea uh, to look at uh, home routers. Latest example is the Netgear Nighthawk. In its firmware, uh, the update is done via wget from an HTTPS site. And well, HTTPS not too bad, but wget is actually here explicitly used with the no check certificate option, which will essentially undermine the purpose of reusing HTTPS and accept any certificate. Also, if files are not available, then for convenience of the attacker, it will fall back to FTP. Sadly, this weakness can only sort of be fixed by actually disabling automatic firmware updates and then update the firmware manually by downloading the firmware from Netgear's website, which of course is much less convenient and may actually lead to you just not updating the firmware. So not really sure if it's good advice here to disable the automatic uh, firmware update, uh, but uh, well, I guess uh, pick your poison and figure out uh, what risks you're willing to accept here. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.